A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Most of the soldiers who manned the forts on the western frontier of the United States were trained in the Civil War. They knew very little about fighting Indians, and time and time again, they turned to the masked rider of the plains for help. It was he, more than any other man, who brought law and order, peace and security to the new territory. And now return with us to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Fort Gardner was little more than a blockhouse and a barracks. There was no stockade surrounding the buildings, for they were open to attack from only one direction. Our story opens late one night as Private Keating is doing sentry duty. He mutters to himself as he paces back and forth. Gosh, it sure is lonesome standing guard. I wish I was in the barracks with Carl. What's that? Was a man made that noise? Who goes there? Stan! Hey, Stan! Huh? Who's there? It's me, Carl. Don't talk so loud. Carl? Keep your voice down, Stan. What in blazes are you doing here, anyhow? I thought you were sleeping. I... Well, I got something else planned. Yeah? Stan, look here. You'd do me a favor, wouldn't you? Shucks, ain't you the best friend I got? And you're my best friend. Stan, I gotta go to town tonight. To Redwood City? Uh-huh. But you can't. Major Brandon gave orders no one was to be allowed to leave or enter camp without his permission. Sure, I know that, but... Well, this is something special. Now, wait, I I can't... promised Amy I'd be in town for sure tonight. It's her birthday. Gosh, Carl, you could ask me anything else, and I'd be glad to do it. But if I let you through the lines and it's found out, I could be court-martialed. It won't be found out. I don't know about that. The Major's been gosh awful strict since there's been so much arms and ammunition stored of late. But I'll be back for Reveille. Honest, I would. I can't do it. I just can't. I didn't tell you all the reason for my wanting to get to town. But now I reckon I'll have to. What's that? It ain't only Amy's birthday. Her and me have got it fixed to be married tonight. I got the ring and the preacher's waiting for us. Well, I'll be doggone. You never told me nothing about that before. We was keeping it secret. Amy's a mighty nice girl, Carl. You blame right she is. And I want to marry her so she won't have to work in a cafe for Mike anymore. I, well, I, I wanted to have things a little easier for a change. You're making it awful hard to say no. Huh? And there's another thing. Yeah? I think I'm going to find out who's been stealing guns and things. Huh? Yep. Amy wrote she had a line on who the low-down skunk is. But she wouldn't put it in a letter for fear somebody else might see it. Then, by gosh, it must be some fellow in town. It's the way I got it figured. 
Oh, come on, Stan. Let me through, won't you? I'd do the same for you. You... You'll promise to be back a full morning? I'll give you my word. But where's your horse? You can't walk to town. I got him tethered over by them trees. I shouldn't be doing You're a real part, Stan. But go ahead. I'll take the chance. It ain't as though you was a crook. Thanks, Stan. I won't forget this. Well, I gotta hurry. Even if you figure I'm held up somewhere, I don't think there's a problem. This is a darn local thing for me to do. But shucks, if you can't do a friend a favor once in a while, what's a friend for? Get up. Get along there. Come on. <laughs> there he goes. He sure is in a hurry to get hitched up, all righty. Say, who are them two fellas coming this way? Halt! Who goes there? Friend. Halt, I tell you. Oh, oh that's the war scout. Oh. Your mask. We want to go inside the lines. I wish to speak to Major Brandon. You can't get by. No? Them's orders. Nobody gets in or out without the Major says so. Did the rider who just left have the Major's permission? Uh-huh. What's that? We just now saw a man riding away. You, you didn't. You deny it? You, you must have been seeing things. There weren't nobody left camp. Well, I might have been mistaken. I'm sure you was. But I still say we want to enter camp. And I still say you can't. Very well. So you might just as well turn around and head back where you came from. Come, Tonto. Mm. All right, old fellow. Get him up, Scott. And don't try to sneak in camp either, because it won't work. show in this country the papers we carry from Colonel Hughes, but I don't want our errand known unless it's necessary. Oh. When the Colonel asked me to investigate the thefts from the fort here, he said it'd be best to act secretly. And him, right. And I had another reason for not insisting. What, that? The sentry lied to us. Uh, don't you know that? We did see a man leaving camp. Uh. And if the sentry wanted to hide the fact, it looked suspicious. Uh. Maybe the rider was only a soldier wishing to spend a night in town. Isn't that what you think? I don't know. But he may have some connection with the thefts. We soon find out. Yes, we'll follow that rider and see where he goes. The following morning, after roll had been called, it was discovered that Private Jordan was missing. Major Brandon made a hurried investigation, then sent an orderly to summon Stan Keating to his quarters. We see Stan as he enters the room. You sent for me, sir? Yes. Come in and close the door. Yes, sir. Private Keating, you were on guard duty last night? Sure I was, sir. You know that Private Carl Jordan is missing? I... I heard some talk, sir. I'm going to ask you a question. I want an honest answer. Did you let Carl Jordan through the lines last night? I... I... Speak up. I did, sir. Oh, just as I thought. You're both in on it. I... He promised he'd be back. I couldn't see the harm in it, sir. If that were all, there'd still be no excuse. But I think that this proves you two were the men getting the arms and ammunition out of the fort. You, you don't mean that. Last night, 20 rifles and a case of ammunition were taken from the fort. No. Men that would sell arms to be used against their own comrades are, are the worse than murderers. But it ain't so. I'm no crook and neither is Carl. Don't lie out of it. Carl just went to see his girl. I'll stake my life on it. Of course you'd have some such story. You, you mean you really believe what you just said? I have no direct evidence. But by heavens... I'll see that you pay for what you've done if it's the last thing I do. It ain't right. You forget yourself. I don't care who or what you are. You can't say me and Carl are rotten yellow traitors that'll steal guns. Shut up. I won't shut up. You can't make I'll me. I'll teach you. Stay away from me. I'll take care of you. I warned you. You struck me. And I'd do it again for the things you said. That's, that's enough. Perhaps I couldn't convict you for running guns, but you struck your superior officer. You'll get no less than a dishonorable discharge. I couldn't help it. You call me them things. Anybody else have done the same. You'll be confined to the guardhouse. Orderly, come here. Yes, sir? Private Keating is under arrest. At the court-martial that followed, it could not be proved that Stan was involved in the plot to steal arms for sale to hostile Indians. 
but for striking his superior officer, he was dismissed from the army with a dishonorable discharge. We see him now two days later as he enters the cafe in Redwood City. Howdy, soldier. Something for you? Where's Amy, Mike? What do you want to see her for? I wanted to see if I could find out. I want to speak to you, Stan. Huh? Who are you? Come. I'll explain that later. How'd you know my name? There's a table over here where we can talk. But I ain't got Come much. along. Well, all right, but I ain't got much time. The last long horns for the best day of the raid. I guess they will. I do my Sit down. Now, see here. Just what do you want with me? We met once before. Do you remember a masked man when you were on sentry duty? Sure I do, but I got... I'm that man. And I want to ask you some questions. You're him? You did let a man through the lines that night. I, I reckon everybody knows about it now since I got kicked out of the army. What do you know about him? I can't see as how you got the right to interfere. You're under suspicion, Stan. I advise you to tell me what you know. Well, that's what I'm here for tonight. His name was Carl Jordan. He was my part, and I want to find out what happened to him. Why did he leave camp that night? Shucks, he was stuck on a dancer they got here. Amy Martin, her name is. Yes? He, he was going to marry her that night. You are sure of that? I told you Carl was my part, didn't I? He wouldn't tell me nothing that weren't so. I see. The major claimed him and me had something to do with the arms being stolen. But I happen to know he was going to find out about that, too, that night. He was? Uh-huh. Amy had with him she knew who was in it. She said she'd tell him when he come to town. Then that explains it. Huh? Explains what? Why Amy isn't here. She's gone? She disappeared yesterday. It was her I wanted to ask about, Carl. Stan, at first I believed you might be one of the thieves. But I asked questions about you and everybody spoke well of you. Yeah? There are several things I can't tell you yet. But I want you to remain in town until I see you again. But what have you got to do with all this, stranger? That's one of the things you'll learn later. I don't know just what to think. But I'm free to say I like the way you talk. I'm leaving now. But I expect you to keep still about what's been said and wait to hear from me. Stranger, I'll do that. Uh, now's the time to talk to Mike. Uh, Honto, do that. I think Stan Keating can be trusted. We'll find out soon. Him look like plenty good fella. Mike's standing alone now. Go over there. I'll be watching. Me want make talk with you. Huh? What do you got to say to me, Redskin? We talk in there. In my office? Uh. Well, come along. But if you want to borrow some cash or something, it ain't gonna do you no good. No, that's not it. Uh, here we are. Go on in. Uh. No. You closed door. You sure act as though you got something hefty on your mind, didn't you? Me see bad thing. Yeah? Me see you kill feller. Why are you? you kill feller named Carl. No, loco. Me see you. That's what's your game, Redskin. Uh, you pay me cash, me keep still. <laughs> I get you. Trying to hold me up, huh? Me tell law, you will not pay me. And if I give you cash, you'll keep your mouth shut? Uh, me not talk. My cash is out to the bar. I'll have to go and get it. Uh, that's all right. Now you stay here. I won't be but a minute. Uh, me wait. You ain't looked around the room any, have you? What you mean? I'll tell you, Redskin. I don't savvy how come you seen me get that soldier. And I ain't sure just how much more you know. But the only windows in that room has got bars on them. And I'm leaving you in there till I get ready to come back and finish you off. You quick, Toto. Now try and get out. <laughs> well, that's gonna try to get me to pay him off in cash, would he? <laughs> well, he'll be darn sorry you tried to stunt like that after I'm through with him. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger sent Tonto to Mike, the owner of the cafe, to accuse him of murder. Mike locked the Indian in the back room. Late that same evening, we see the Lone Ranger, unmasked but disguised, as he approaches Mike. Mike. Yeah? What's on your mind? I see you're staying close to your office. What's that to you? I was wondering why. Well, you can just stop wondering and start moving along. I ain't got no hankering for talk right now. Take that key out of your pocket. What key? The key to your office. Hey, what do you think? Hurry, I saw you lock the door on the Indian that went in your office. All I got to do is yell and you're done for, stranger. Perhaps, but I've got you covered and you'll go before me. Now open that door. I ought to hurry. I am doing it, but I'll remember you. And when I find you again, you'll be taken care of. Don't talk. Do as I tell you. Blast you. Careful what you do, Mike. It means your life. Ah. Come on, Tonto. <laughs> Tonto, no, you come. We're getting out of here, Kimosabe. Ah. You'd better if you saw me what's good for you. Mike, if you come after us, it'll be the last thing you'll ever do. You talk awful big. Come, Tonto. Uh -huh. Don't forget what I said, stranger. You're going to be too careful. Better get our horses, Tonto. Uh -huh. We'll go back to camp for the night. And tomorrow I want to talk to Stan again. Mm, got plan? I have now. What happened tonight proves things we only suspected before. <laughs> we play good trick on Mike. Uh. <laughs> He's watching us. He'd shoot if he dared. Uh, here, door. One thing, Tyler. This proves Mike was the man who shot Carl. Mm, that's right. So far, we're the only ones who know Carl is dead. Uh, that's right. Stan told me Carl had received a letter from Amy saying she knew the thieves. And that's why Mike killed Carl. It must have been. The trick we played proves Mike was the killer. The man we saw right away after Carl was shot the other night looked like Mike, but we'd never be able to prove it. Me tell Mike me know him killer. <laughs> he believed you, or he wouldn't have made you a prisoner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Steady, Silver. Uh, there, there are plenty more work to do. There's a lot to do. Find Amy. Learn Mike's connection with the missing guns. And who in the fort is selling them? Uh -huh. But we'll know all that before we're through. Come on, Tonto. The following night, when Stan left the cafe, Tonto stepped from the shadows and touched his arm. What do you want with me, Injun? You come. Tonto's horse, wait outside town. Did you say your name was Tonto? Not right. Well, what do you want with me? Mask man, send me. The mask man? Huh? Where's he at? You come. Has he found Carl yet? No. Carl, dead. Dead? Huh? Mike, father, kill him. You know what you're talking about, Injun? Uh, you mean Mike in the cafe? Not right. Why, that low-down, ornery polecat? No. Let go of my arm, Injun. I'm going back. No. To... Let go of me, I no. say. No, you listen. Tonto's friend... Tell you many things. You hear his plan. Mike isn't going to get away with killing my pal. No, you wait. You kill Mike now. You hang. You listen, Tonto's friend. Mike hang. Where is he? Him not far. All right. I'll go with you and I'll listen. When I'm coming back here, Injun, nothing's going to stop me from getting even. <laughs> Tonto brought Stan to the masked man's camp where the Lone Ranger explained his plan. Then for several days, all three of them watched the movements of the cafe owner. One night, Stan reined in his horse before Mike's home, dismounted, and entered the house without knocking. What the... You rotten killer. Put down that gun. You murdered my part. You killed Carl without giving him a chance. Who told you that? I was talking to the redskin that seen it. That blasted engine. And I'm going to drill you for what you've done. Maybe the Lord let you go. The word of a redskin don't count for much, but I'm taking things into my own hands. Wait, listen, I... I needn't try to beg off. I'll give you cash. I'll do anything. You're but don't... finished, you polecat. Don't wait. Your six gun led the teacher. Stop. I have you covered. You can't stop me from killing him. I'm going to. You won't do anything. Now drop that gun. You can't stop me. I told you to drop that gun. There it is. But I don't see why anybody'd want to save the life of an ornery coyote like this fellow here. That's my business. I don't know who you are myself, but you sure got here just in time. Get me from shooting him now, but there'll be another time. I'll have something to say about that. You think on so? your way. <laughs> and when you get out, you'd better keep right on going. There ain't the hombre alive slick enough to get a second chance to shoot me. We'll see about that. Don't stay around the house. We'll be watching for you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's the last we'll ever see of him. I savvy them kids all right. They get the nerve up once, but if something happens, it's gone for good. Some of that way. Well, not me curious, stranger. How'd you happen to show up just when you did? I was coming to talk to you. Then I heard that man threatening to shoot. Uh-huh. Say, there's something about you. Ain't we met up before? It's possible. I just don't seem able to place you, though. Mike, I want to make a deal with you. A deal? I happen to know you've been buying guns. Huh? Who told you that? And I have guns to sell. Oh. I can make you a good price. It seems to me you know an awful lot. I've heard things. Yes, huh? Well, I reckon an outlaw like you might have ways of finding things out of that. Are you interested? I might be. I ain't just saying. But I got a notion you saved my life because you figured it'd be worth cash to you. Ain't that it? Right now, I want to talk business. <laughs> That's what I meant. Well, what have you got to sell? I can guess you 20 long Tom Springfields and a case of ammunition. What's that you said? I said 20 rifles and ammunition. Where'd you get them? I don't have to tell that. I want to know, do you hear me? Where'd you get them? I got my information from the fort. You did, huh? Well, I... Will you buy them? You can name your own price. I want to get rid of them. I just bet you do. I'll not make this offer again. I, uh... I you've got to give me time to think it over. How much time? Um, can you come back tomorrow? Yes, I can do that. Make it tomorrow night. Very well, I'll be here at the same time. If you decide not to deal, I'll find another buyer. I'll let you know. Good. Sell me my own guns, Willie. Twenty rifles and ammunition is just what I got. By golly, I'm going to look into this. And if somebody's been double-crossing me... They're sure gonna be sorry. It was the next day that four horsemen took cover behind a great boulder that concealed them from anyone passing by on the trail. Two of the horsemen were the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The others were Stan Keating and Colonel Hughes. You'll have to come this way, Colonel. We can't afford to let him escape us. You can take my word, he won't. We get him all right. We've got to. He killed my part and fixed it so the two of us was branded thieves. I've got to clear my name. You will, Stan. And I think you can promise to be back in the Army with a promotion if this plan succeeds. Thank you, sir. That's what I want more than anything else in the world. Wait. You here? That must be him now. Good. Quiet. He'll soon be to the rise. He's topping it now. Then it's safe to follow him. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Get up. Get up. An hour later, Major Brandon was busy at his desk in his quarters at the fort when he heard noisy footsteps coming down the corridor. The door burst open and Mike stood facing him. You're the fellow I want to see, you fool. What are you doing here? You know what brung me. I told you we shouldn't be seen together. I gave you that pass with the lines only for an emergency. You're a mighty smooth talker, ain't you? If there's trouble, I'll... You sold me guns, didn't you? Then you told that masked fellow where they was hid so he could steal them and sell them again. You're crazy. But not so darn crazy I'm going to stand for being cheated. Now, look here, You needn't try to lie out of it. I want nobody but you and me knew where them guns was hid. But when I went to see if they were still there after talking to the masked fellow, they was gone. Gone? Impossible. I've been playing square with you. But I should have known you're the kind of skunk that'd try a stunt like this. But I didn't have... I've been taking all the risk. It's me that's been getting the guns to the Indians. You've taken no more risks than I have. Yeah? How about that soldier I had to shoot? That was safe enough. And how about the girl that wrote that letter to him? Ain't it a risk keeping her tied up over at the old Sunrise Mine? Should have got rid of her. <laughs> Not me. She and me are going to get hitched just as soon as I can talk some sense into her head. But you can't stay here. If 
someone should see us together... I ain't be... leaving until I get back the cash I gave you for them guns. And what's more, I want enough cash to make up for the profit I lost on them, too. I tell you, I don't know anything about them. You won't pay me? I'll not be responsible for something that's not my fault. Why, blessed you fool. Put down that gun. I'll get you. The game is up a moment. Ah, you smashed my head. I only hit your gun. All right, Colonel. I have them coming. Why, you? Your Honor, rest, Major. I've heard enough to convict both of you. It was a trap. And you were caught in it. That's the same masked fellow I've seen before. I sent him here to find out about these thefts. You trapped him into admitting he killed Carl Jordan. The masked fellow did that? He and the Indian saw Carl shot. But you joined the crowd in town too soon for them to make sure of your identity. And the engine didn't really know nothing at all. You got me into this, Mike. The masked man trailed you until he found where the guns were hidden. Then he took them away and offered to sell them to you. He knew as soon as you found they were gone, you'd suspect your partner here in the fort. So that's how you knew I was in it. We followed Mike here. Is everything cleared up now, sir? It is, and you'll soon be a soldier again. Thanks to the masked fellow. But first, you'll go to the Sunrise Mine with a detachment of men to rescue that girl. Yes, sir. And then we'll attend to these fellows. But who in tarnation is that mask hombre? Him? <laughs> Why, he's the Lone Ranger. Hi! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated.